Still Alrighty. This weekend, or last week, we went to the Plain Air Convention. And I know all of you are anxiously wanting to know what that was like. Um, it was absolutely amazing. Eric Rhodes, who puts the show together, I had gone now um, three years in a row, and every year he steps it up. And this year, it, it was, you know how conventions are, you have you know, four or five days of, of activities and in the past it's been like interesting and then we go out and paint and then you'd wonder, well, what am I going to do now? This time you had, it was like um, Ringling Brothers Circus. You had, in this room you had this, this room you had that, that room you had that. Then we would go out and paint. And then after we would paint, um, they had critiques and other demonstrations, and they even had night painting. So after you were there painting all day and going to conferences, and now the conferences started like at 6.30 in the morning. So you started at 6.30 for the, the boot camp. And in the boot camp, um, you, we learned about marketing and marketing your work. And I know that a lot of times when you're in a situation like that, you kind of feel like you're being sold to but not at this. There wasn't even like, you know, oh, you need to buy in, into this, or you need to buy. It was just purely honest information. It was uh, the first day they had, in which what I was the, really interested in, is um, how to work with Twitter and Instagram and how to do Facebook. So those of you that are in my Facebook page, and if you're not, you should be Facebooking me. But if you're in my Facebooking, you actually saw real live photos being taken and put up while things were going on. So a lot of the, the, the stuff that was going on. And I, last year I went, to, they had a little media, um, you know, information and I kind of followed up on that. And I kind of played with it a little bit throughout the year. It was nowhere near of what it was this year. The difference in my career this last year is like from night to day. I mean, it really went from Stephen to Stefan. Um, I, I literally came, just because I started implementing the things that I learned from last year's conference, and how to work with Twitter, how to work with Facebook, how to work, and it, there were just little hints back then, but this year we had experts that came in and talked about how that was done. But just what I learned last year made this conference huge. Everybody knew who I was, Everybody, you know, had seen my post, everybody. I mean, it was almost like they thought I was a really big deal. You are. You are. No, not quite. No, no. <laughs> I'm, I'm a big fish in my pond, but it's a big lake out there. And so, so uh, it was really awesome. Um, then, uh, so we had, we had the, the, the boot camp in the morning, starting at 6 and the 3rd. And then we had incredible painters. Now, if you can imagine, there were 800 people there. 800 people. Every one of them in that room is an artist like you. And some of the artists are phenomenal artists that you've never even heard of. These are people that just paint all the time, like yourselves, and never market, never advertise. So you're amongst people that, you know, when they show you your work, their work, you go, oh my God, why aren't you published? And they're, you know, they're not interested in that. And then in, Mar then in walks in these incredible artists that you see all the time. I mean, I was Facebooking some of the people I was meeting and some of the people in my classes that kind of know the art. They're like going, I am so jealous. I mean, I can't believe that you're like standing next to these icons in painting. And it's just not plain air painting. These are people that, that are like name brand artists. So it was just incredible as far as that's concerned. That um, at, the, at the opening, he actually, uh, Eric, who was running the thing, actually did a plug for us, for the Grandview, because he's a sponsor for the Grandview, the PBS show. And so he kind of threw a plug at me, which was really, really great, had me stand up. And he, he said, he wanted to let everybody know that there were 75 instructors. Okay, so there were 75 of us that were field instructors. And those field instructors, their job was to make sure that the students that were there had help, were, could ask questions, 
and were available for that. And so he had me stand up and he said, you know, can you tell everybody what it's like to paint outdoors and whether or not you have any bloopers? He's saying that, you know, that bloopers are, a, you know, a thing. And of course I stood up and I go, no, I never made a mistake ever. You know? <laughs> and I don't think he liked that. But anyway, it wasn't true. He didn't quite give me enough time to say, for every good painting that you see out there, I've got a closet full of paintings that didn't turn out. In fact, a lot of artists, they're always, they're like, they don't have like a, like a huge amount of integrity because all of the paintings that you see in a gallery, uh, you think, oh wow, this artist, like Richard Schmidt, you go, oh my God, Richard Schmidt, you must be a saint. And they'll go, yes, they're good. They're pretty good. Not that he would say that. But for every artist that says, yeah, they're all good, I'm actually pleased, they know their garage is filled with paintings that didn't turn out. And especially in plain air painting, one of the goals with plain air painting is, is you go out there and you try, and you go out there and try. If you played golf, and you could play it right off the bat, you would quit it. Or you go play peewee golf, you know? It's like, it's a 50-50 chance that you're gonna get it right. It doesn't require any skill. But the great thing about painting is that you will go out and you will fail. And you'll go out and you fail. And you go out and you fail. And you go out and you go, maybe not so fail, but it's not as good. I had gone out to paint outdoors five years. I had been bringing students out into the field for five years. I had told people the rules and the things for five years. In those five years, I knew I never once went home with a home run. Not once did I ever come home with a home run. And I didn't know that. I thought I came with good paintings. But when you hit a home run, it's completely different. And the first time that that happened, I was at Mesa Verde. And when I left that spot, I got a hole in one. It's like golf. It's like, you know, you shoot all your life, and if you get a hole in one, you're amazing. If you can get two, Joy's got three, you know. So if you get three, home, three holes in one, you're amazing. That's how plein air painting is. That's why they call it the new golf. Because if you go out, if you go out and you nail a hole in one, you'll know it. It's like a hole in, you'll like leave that spot as high as you possibly can. You should go home and buy drinks for everybody at the convention. 800 drinks for everybody, you know. Everything else is just kind of in reference to that. So Eric was saying, you know, the, the, the teachers are out there to be there for you. So I took that on this year. And so I painted before the conference on Monday. And then the rest of the time when everybody would go out. And Eric did something ingenious this year. Because some people were saying, well, we didn't know who were teachers and who were not. So Eric this year gave all the teachers a flag. So you would put this in the ground where you were painting. And so then you knew that they were a part of the faculty. So you could go over and ask them questions. But since I had committed that I was going to help everybody there, I'd said if I could help 800 people, I would have an impact on this event. So and then he gave us faculty hats. It's not my look, but anyway, so. And then he gave all of the students this hot pink card. And so if you were in trouble, you would put this out on your painting, and then faculty members that would walk by would, would uh, know that you need help. Because outside of that, we don't know, you know if you need help or anything like that. Okay. Isn't that a wonderful idea? So you could go like this, and the fa it was up to anybody close to you that could see that or, or was walking by to stop. Not only that, um, you had cards that were uh, underneath your, your, your um, name badge that said you were a newbie. And since I was committed this year that I would meet everybody at the conference that needed help and everybody that had a red flyer on their name tag, I would say, did you get help? Did you need help? Do you find somebody? Uh, and I was just like, I was like an inspiration machine. And the night, the night of the conference, there was a lady there, and she was buying some supplies, 
and she was like really hesitant. You could hear her. She's like, oh, I don't know if I could do this or I should do this. And she's walking over to, you know, and somebody was trying to sell her an easel and stuff. And you could hear the hesitancy in her voice. And so I immediately perked up and I walked over to her and I said, so what's the issue? And she says, I've never painted outdoors before. I'm a studio painter. And I, you know, I don't know, this is intimidating. You know, she's from back east somewhere. And so I said, don't worry, you're on my radar. I'm going to help you through this. So I said, tomorrow I'm going to look for you and I'm going to help you. So the next day we were at a cinema and it was windy like crazy. And I, I uh, was kind of helping some people along the way, but I was looking for my new found friend. And she had found one of the other faculty members trying to show her how to set everything up. So I said, well, you're in good hands right now. I'm going to go. So I walked, wandered a little ways away, and then I wandered back to her. Like I said, she was my little project. <laughs> and I looked at what she was painting. And this is the great thing about the conference, because if you do the conference you know, the way that it should be done, you will, you will absorb everything. Okay? But I looked at her and what she was doing, and I said, what are you doing? And she said, well, I'm painting this and this and this. And I was looking at her painting, and I'm like going, I don't see that. So I asked her, I said, some basic stuff. And, I, and it was really stuff that I think was missing in almost everybody. I would walk up to people, and I would ask the same, same questions. And so I would say, do you want coaching? And they would obviously go, yes. Some people would say, I'm not worthy, I'm not, don't look at me, you know, you're like famous. I don't want to like, you know, show you how bad I am. And I'd go, no, we're here for you. We really are, that's why we're here, to help you get out of your problems. So I went to her, and these are the same questions you have to ask yourself. So I said, how long have you been painting? She said, I've been painting for five or six years. I said, what's your style? And kind of expressionism abstract. And I said, okay, I can see that by your painting. It's expression abstract. And I go, but I'm not really seeing that on your painting there. And so I said, you know, if you come to this conference and you insist on painting the way that you do at home without using any of the advice or any of the things, the tools that the people were giving you, then you really don't need to be here, you know? The whole idea is to learn some things and apply them immediately. So I asked her, so what, do you, what kind of painting you do? And she told me. And I said, how does that work for you at home? And she goes, horrible. Nobody buys my paintings. Nobody even likes them. And I go, well, then why are you here doing the same thing? You know, I said, so I said, let's create a new possibility. Let's take what um, you're learning from us, and I'm going to teach you a few things to look for, and why not we apply it on this painting? So I said, these are, these are the things you need to look for. First, you need to have a central focal point. I said, where's your central focal point? And she told me where it was. And because you guys are in my class, I'm not going to go through all of that stuff. And I go, that's not a central focal point. The central focal point has to be this. Then I said, um, where's your drawing? You know, where, how, does, how does that draw? Where your eye ma magnets are. I asked her all of these questions. And I only spent like 10 minutes with her. And I said, now create a possibility of not painting like you did, but paint a new way. And really study what's in front of you. And then I wandered off. And I helped some other people and some other people and some other people. And we were out there for two hours. On my way back, she's packing up and there's a group of people around her. And I said, so let's see her painting. I looked at her painting and it was amazing. It was one of the best pieces that that group had ever done. She was, she was beaming. She couldn't believe that she could get that kind of quality in her painting. Just because I gave her just a few little hints. And I mean, she, she and then the following morning I, I ran into her, 6.30 in the morning at the conference, and I said, so how was last night for you? She said she couldn't sleep all night. The advice that I gave her, 10 minutes worth of advice, not on her, like, like she couldn't sleep all night. You know, it was like she couldn't see the, the new way of seeing. The rest of the conference, she did phenomenal work. Absolutely phenomenal. That's where it just, 
All you need is just that one bit of information and it can transform your life. And it was information after information after from all of these artists. At, when, the, when the day was done, there was a group of artists that said, we're, gonna, we're teaching a class on painting the harbor at night. And so there were a group, and it was freezing that night. Monday night, it was cold. Uh, Silomar was windy like crazy. Anybody who stayed there and painted was crazy. <laughs> I mean, I wouldn't have stayed there, but everybody stayed there. And I went into the lobby, and there were 60 people standing there with their boxes ready to follow two guys on, into the darkness to go paint a night scene. And so the, this caravan of people are wandering through Monterey, getting down to the harbor, setting up in the pitch dark. And they got their little lanterns on, and <laughs> some people are like painting from the security light, you know, that every time that it would turn off, they would go like this, <laughs> so that the light would turn on again. And some of the most beautiful paintings of the entire conference were done that night, you know. And then you went home, it was 11 o'clock at night, and then, you know, the following day. I was so inspired that I was just taking on everybody. I mean, I would not. I was supposed to go back after teaching out on location to go back for an advertising party that they had. I was driving Chris back, and all of a sudden I saw another 100 artists along the beach. I mean, imagine... Uh, well, probably 300 artists lined up along the boardwalk along the ocean. I mean, one after the other, just boom, boom, boom. Artists with flags, you know, the teachers and stuff. And so I was driving Chris back going, after I drop you off, I've got to come back here. These are my people. <laughs> I adopted them all. And so I drove back and I started from the beginning of the line. I said, do you need any help? You're doing it. Give you, and 10 minute speeches. I didn't get to everybody. 10 minutes. And I would say, don't look at your penny. Look at me. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, I'd tell them. I'd say, now paint. Then I'd go to the next person. Da -da 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 -da. 10 minutes. Don't look at them. Look at me. Okay. <laughs> then go to the next one. Don't look at your penny. And then finally, it got dark. And I'm getting to the people. You can't even see anything anymore. And I've got this group of people behind me, and I'm explaining these things. And they're so excited that the guy who I was talking with, who everybody was listening that I hadn't gotten to, was putting Hail Marys in the middle of the dark onto his paintings, putting footnotes on, because what I was telling him was so important. And he'd been painting for a long time. And the stuff didn't dawn on him. So it was an amazing, amazing thing. So next year it's going to be in Tucson, Arizona. And I'm committed that all of you go. Well, I'm not going to pay your way. But it is an amazing experience. In fact, I'm thinking about having a mini convention within the convention. So we'll have a Grand View convention in the, f in when, I don't know where we're going to fit it in because the, the, the four days are so full of stuff. Maybe we'll do it at the beginning or at the end, but we'll do a, a mini Grandview convention within the convention, which would be extraordinary. So.